What's going on, everyone? Welcome to today's episode. It's an amazing, jam-packed, infotainment-filled interview with none other than Igor, also known as Vitruvian Physique. Now, he's a massive YouTube, he has a massive YouTube channel with over 500,000 subscribers. He's a power lifter, an online fitness coach, a men's physique competitor, and just an overall good friend that we've known for many, many years. So if you haven't subscribed to our podcast, make sure to do so. It's called the Fit, Healthy, and Happy Podcast, and you can find it on Spotify, Google Play, the Apple Store, wherever. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, buckle your seatbelts. This is a great one, and enjoy this episode. Thank you for that very gracious introduction as well i appreciate it yeah and uh we're, we're gonna get in some great questions some fun today uh you know we had some fun talks even before getting on this so i'm really really excited to kind of you know just jump into the meat of potatoes of everything you know catch up uh you know ask some fun questions uh get some different opinions on here uh what's the first one we got kyle so you know i just wanted to you know obviously it's been a it's been a year of the whole covid stuff like what what is tr- training look like for you you know how how has it changed like what's what's going on there man give us the update okay oh uh, well um <clears throat> training has been crap because <laughs> no, no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding um it, it's it's been rough uh because like i'm in toronto i'm in canada and we are probably the hardest like one of the hardest lockdowns in the world like, for example, if you look at the states, like, obviously, every state is a bit different. But I remember, like, places like Florida, places like Texas, they locked down for a little bit. And then they pretty much opened up or they had, like, uh, opened up with limited capacity. But, like, I'm seeing people on my social media as early as, like, last June. And they're in the gyms. Maybe it's half capacity, but they're in the gyms. And even places like New York, like, they kind of gradually go, we're here. And it, we've had in the beginning, it was so bad. Dude, I remember I was at a calisthenics park in like July. And this is after already, what, four or five months of lockdown, no gym. I don't have any home equipment. All I have is a set of dumbbells going up to 20, which I bought for my girlfriend two years ago as like uh, a gift. And so I'm, it's funny, I got them for her. I'm like, hey, babe, here's some fives, tens, and, and maybe twenties. And here I am using that as the only exercise equipment I have that and like some old resistance band. And I remember it was July and I was at a calisthenics park, just doing pull-ups, push-ups, cause that's all I had. And then the cops came and kicked me out because this is when we were like full out 100% sit your ass at home lockdown. It got to the point where I can't go to the gym and now I can't even do pull-ups in the park because there's some dude eight feet away from me doing push-ups. And, and then we obviously came out of lockdown for a grand total of like, what, 60 days, which which was awesome. It was great. I mean, I lost like 30% of my strength, but okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll slowly rebuild. And then November, we went back into it and it's been hard. Fortunately, I have, eventually I gave up. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to spend like the three grand or whatever it costs. And I got like a, a squat rack which took like four months to get here because everything sold out. But I got the squat rack, I got the barbell and I've been doing the basics. We're talking squat, bench, all that stuff, which, which even that, like, look, I love it. And it's great. It's way better than again, doing pushups in my kitchen, which was just a few months ago. But I mean, I think I'm in a much better position than so many other people. But even then, like, how many days of nothing but bench and squat can you do? Like, I, I miss the dumbbells. I miss the cables. I miss having a little bit more exercise variety than the absolute basics. It's, it's better than, like, a lot of people out there, but I miss the gym, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, even me after two weeks of, you know, having nothing and having to do, you know, uh, I have 25s, luckily, but... You know, Ooh, I, I looked at it as a positive. Yeah, I got 25, so I was able to do a lot. But I looked at it as a positive because I've was uh, i been programming so many at-home workouts for clients. So at least I got to run through all of those these last two weeks and, like, you know, realize what's good and what's not. So that, that's that been a bonus. You always have to kind of look at the positive, right, you know, the best we can. But, um, yeah, that's, that's – yeah. We're, we're really happy to have you here, man. You know, above Thanks. all, like for those who, who don't know, like we've done quite a few collabs, like Igor's, you know, YouTube channel has blown up, but we knew him from the start below 20,000 subscribers. And hey, it's been, it's been a journey. The, uh, you guys yeah. were the first collab, like I ever oh, that's did. What's up. Like, I think back in like, I think it was like 2016, 2017, something like that. I, I remember <laughs> the first collab we did was like, uh, I think we did. We we all went for our our one rep maxes on the bench. Yeah, <laughs> like three thirty five, 
and Josh hit like 340, 345. You had I, don't, to I think I was touch and going at that yeah, time. You did. Like that was yeah. my dark phase. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, it was, it's, it's been like, it's been, oh God, and now I'm starting to feel old because that was when I was like 25, 26 or something. And here I am pushing 30. So, yeah. But yeah, a lot has been accomplished since then, which is awesome. Like, you know, what, um, if you haven't checked out his channel, what he's really known for is he makes these incredible deep dives. Like he'll pick a topic and he'll make it really fun, really exciting. And he'll kind of just really jump into it. You know, super knowledgeable, awesome guy. It was great to meet up with him. I remember we had a mutual friend, Tomer, and he's like, hey, you should uh, film with our friend. And, you know, that's kind of what kicked it all off. But I guess adding on to Kyle's question, this is a fun question I get asked quite a lot you know because obviously calisthenics you know a lot of people love it you know it's getting uh, some buzz like what's your opinion on uh you know someone who trains calisthenics like let's say perfect situation um you know perfect intensity perfect uh, consistency how would you find that their results would compare to someone in the gym that's doing it because a lot of people will say hey i feel like i can get as big from home do you do you hold that to be true or no so first of all you're not going to get as strong but then again, that also depends on your definition of strong. If you're going to say like strength is just one rep max on a bench or squat. Yeah. No, you know, you doing, I don't care how many pistol squats you can do. You're not going to be able to like squat four plates. However, if you count strength as other things, there's, you know, uh, there's other ways of looking at strength and intensity. For example, there's a lot of people who can squat five plates, bench three and a half plates, but then they can't hold half of these like calisthenic movements. Um, so and I guess you can say if you're, you're not going to get a sh- raw strength in like the big three compound lifts, how much weight you can physically pick up, but you're going to get strength. You're going to get strong in different other ways. Uh, in terms of size, I don't think that you can put on as much size or at least not as efficiently and as fast. However, it's also like, well, do you even need to for 95% of people out there, probably a lot of the people listening to this podcast I don't think they necessarily have aspirations of growing 18 inch arms or, you know, like uh, this massive chest, like Arnold or something where there's like this photo. I remember where Arnold was doing a side chest pose and his chest was popping out so much that somebody rested like a glass or like a beer bottle on his chest because it it was sticking off like four inches off of his frame. That's awesome. Most people aren't looking for that. And let's be honest, probably can't even get to that if they wanted. So for the average person who's just working out to look like, you know, every, what's, like one of the most common body goals, ha- hashtag body goals that people have is uh, Brad Pitt in Fight Club. You guys seen him? Like seen mm. his phys- Yeah, yeah that's he, a classic. And he was like, what, 5'10", a buck 65 in body weight, 12% body fat. I'm like, you can, for calisthenics, you're going to be absolutely fine. If that's your goal, if you want to look lean, you want to, you want to build a solid amount of muscle. I think calisthenics, like if you train hard and you get a little bit creative, you know, you're going to, you can't just do basic pushups. You might have to do like, you know, decline pushups. You're going to have to start doing like weighted pushups. You're going to have to start doing kind of like get a little bit more creative than the absolute basics. You can totally build a physique, which is going to take you like 70 to 80% size wise. And then if you want to talk about like how lean you are, well, that's not even about you know, weight training, that's just about diet. And in fact, you can even make the argument that these calisthenics guys are going to be leaner because these ex- these workouts are usually higher intensity. They burn more calories. That's why I like when, it, like a lot of times when I see guys who do mostly body weight training, they're almost always ripped. And I think it's partly because these workouts are so high speed, high intensity. You know, it helps in terms of like, you know, the amount of calories they burn, because let's be honest, I can work out my, I can work my ass off at a chest workout in the gym. But if I do one really great set of bench press and then sit there on my phone for four minutes and let my heart rate come down, and then overall, I'm in the gym for an hour and a half, but the actual amount of training I'm doing, if you cut out all the rest time, adds up to like 12 minutes, it's not that many calories burned as opposed to calisthenics where maybe it's a bit more. And that's why you have guys like, uh, who's that? Who's like the most famous guy? Like Chris Harrier, is that him? I, I'm not too privy to that yeah. world. I see the videos, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's like Chris Harry, uh, like official Phoenix, and so he's just an example. Um, he, I mean, like he's got a fantastic physique, and he built it from what I understand mostly through calisthenics. He's not a mass, not massive guy. He's like five nine, one sixty five. But again, you show his physique to ninety five percent of people out there, and they're going to say. 
that's plenty of muscle mass. So like, is it as good as like traditional body weight, sorry, bodybuilding, if you want to get as jacked and massive and strong as possible? No, but for 90% of people out there, again, if you're trying to be the Brad Pitt, you're going to be fine, at least in my opinion. I mean, like, oh no, my arms aren't 18 inches. What am I going to do? They're only 17 and a half. You're going to be okay, bro. I, I 100% agree. And that's why I'm so pumped to have you on here because, you know, that's more or less what I've said too. And I think it's interesting, even like, I'm curious for you, like how your goals have changed. Like, I think a lot of us, you know, like even our business name Colossus, we came in this to be like freaking massive, you know, blow up and, you know, just get crazy big, be the next Arnold. Then you realize, okay, there's some genetic limitations of being a natural. You've been doing yeah. it for a while. Do I want to be this big? Do I want to walk around like filling out my shirt, blasting it out? Like, it's always, you know, it's a little bit of a push pull. And it's, it's interesting. And like you said, I think the general person, a lot of people just want to look good, want to have some lean muscular definition. And you can definitely go ahead and like, you know, you can still take advantage of that. Will you get as big? You know, probably not. My, my big thing I've told a lot of people is you can kind of manipulate between home workouts and the gym, um, you know, your duration, your intensity and your load, right? And if you push and pull those factors that can impact your results. And like, like you said, I worked out from home today. It was like 40 minutes compared to my normal, like 70 minutes. And, you know, I did like a million things. I'm resting 15 seconds. It's just, it's a very different camp for sure. Like one thing I do find is I find it's almost a little bit harder to work out at home. Like, what are your thoughts there? Cause you have to go, go, go. You, you're feeling the burn, you know, like in the gym, I, I can do anything. Like I got the sprint mentality, like, like five reps, no problem for like 600 pounds for one rep. Sure. But ask me to do something for like a long time like it gets tedious to me you know what are your thoughts there it's, it's just a different type of this is the thing like, i feel like i saw people making jokes about this back in like last last march when lockdown first hit and it was like actually the calisthenics guys who do this normally and they were joking about like suddenly instagram is flooded with these jacked bodybuilders who are all completely out of breath because they have to like actually do more than 20 reps you know, in terms of push-ups, And it's true. When I started doing this, I'm like, shit, this is hard because I'm just not used. To it. It's like a different kind of training. It's you're not going like close to maximal load, not close to maximal, but heavy loads. And we're talking like, you know, six, seven, eight reps, reasonable rest times, you know, a little bit more akin to like the uh, almost like powerlifting style of training where it, it's, it's like it's heavy loads but you have a lot more rest time in between. It's not, it's a different kind of intensity. And then you start doing like bodyweight training. For example, you know, take P90X, for example. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. That's, that's how I started actually, which yeah. is interesting. Like. Yeah, I, mean, I, I remember like that was, the, that, was the number, that was the first workout program I ever did back when I was like 15. And that was like a very different, I remember doing that. And then I started working out in the gym and I'm like, wait a second, this is kind of different. Now I'm going for heavier loads and I'm resting a few minutes in between and it's not necessarily as much. Like if you count up the total volume of one P90X workout, it's insane because you're doing like, okay, you're going to do like three sets of push-ups, 30 reps each, and you're going to do like 12 different variations. You add it up, you're doing like a thousand reps. Whereas if, once I started working out in the gym when I was like 18, 19, I'd go in and I'd do like 200 reps total, if that. Obviously it's with more weight and at a slower speed. And again, so it's just a very different kind of training. Like obviously from a cardiovascular standpoint, I started being challenged so much more just in terms of like, I'm, maybe my muscles can keep going, but I'm literally out of breath after a few sets of push-ups and pull-ups, especially with uh, decreased rest periods in between. So it just, it felt very different. And it was good because it's a challenge, but it also sucked because I'm like, damn, I'm not as in shape as I thought I was. <laughs> I love it, man. No, it's, uh, it's so true, you know, and even just, that's the thing is, you know, with all of our clients, even this past year, the amount of changes that have had to be made, you know, it's, th there's always ways to adapt and, you know, just kind of shift gears there. Um, I'd like to let everyone know a little bit more about like, even, you know, um, a couple of your accomplishments, like what are, you know, what we got asked this recently for ourselves, like, Hey, what are your favorite accomplishments within fitness? And I know you've, you know, done a lot of dabbling with powerlifting physique, but like, what are like, you know, three or so things that you're just really proud to share with everyone um, to give them some more background about you? Sure. So uh, obviously men's physique uh, and bodybuilding, I've competed five times now. I pretty much competed almost every year from 2014 onwards. Um, so I was extremely happy about that. My physique has fluctuated. There were shows when I did better than others, but um, it was especially like my 2016 
uh, competition. I was like 174, 173, under like, you know, probably like 8% body fat, give or take. I placed second that year at my show, uh, which was actually a fairly competitive lineup. It was like 14 guys. It's Toronto. So it's a big city, big show. Uh, I was really happy with that. So that's from a physique standpoint. I've competed in powerlifting. I do that more so for fun. I've always considered myself to be a, a pretty serious, natural men's physique competitor. Uh, for powerlifting, I do it more so for fun. Powerlifting, a big reason why I competed was simply because I find that from a mental standpoint, every almost all PRs I've ever hit in my life have been in competition. It's something about like the competitive spirit and like all the people watching you. For me, it's like a natural pre-workout and my strength has always increased like 5%. So sometimes I compete in powerlifting just to go and like hit some PRs just because it, it works for me. But I, I, I mean, so like, I, you know, I'm happy about that. My strength numbers were good for the common man, probably even, you know, I'm, I'm good even for guys who lift, but they're not exactly, as uh, Josh mentioned, uh, a 600 pound deadlift, as you mentioned. I mean, I've hit like, I think it was like 530 on the deadlift, 430 on the squat. Uh, bench was like 335 with a pause, 350 touch and go. Uh, numbers I'm very happy with, but nothing crazy. Um, let's see what else from a physique. One thing, which this is sort of off topic. I don't know if you guys have seen, because uh, this is something new that I've gotten into, but I've gotten into rock climbing uh, about oh, like, yeah. like a year. I got year. that bug too last year, man. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. sick. It's ever since I saw Free Solo, uh, I don't know if you- Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, man, dude, I saw that movie. It's so cheesy because it's like, oh, you, you got into it just because of a movie? And I'm like, hell yes. Also, this is the second time it's happened. It's like pumping, it, pumping iron, right? <laughs> exactly. Does anyone else ever pumping iron? Because that's exactly what happened with me. I watched that movie. Three years later, I'm on a bodybuilding stage. And in this case, it was faster than that. It was, I saw that movie. The next day, I joined the climbing gym. And fortunately, unlike you know people who have like uh, the New Year's resolution and they, they quit after four or six weeks, for me, it's been about a year and a half. I'm still into it. And uh, so the other, I guess the, the, the other thing that I'm really happy, you know, accomplishment-wise would be... Um, so people can rock climb in a gym and that's great. That's recreational. Some people take it seriously. Some people don't. The way I see it is if you rock climb in a gym, it's kind of like all the people who work out in a gym, people who do regular like resistance training, 95% of people who work out in a gym, bench squat, blah, blah, blah. They never actually step on stage at a bodybuilding show. That's for like the people who are really taking it seriously. And in the rock climbing world, I feel they have something similar. That's for people who transfer to outdoor rock climbing. Because indoor, you're fine. You have like, it, it's really set up for you. There's ropes, there's pads. Um, you're going to be okay. It, it's, you're going to have to like, even if you fall, it's like 40 feet, you fall on mats. Worst case, you break your leg. And then I feel like a small amount of people transfer to outdoor rock climbing where it's like, now your life is really in your hands. You're climbing hundred feet, like cliffs. There was jagged rocks under you. Like now it's getting serious. So a lot of people never do that. Uh, for me, just a few months ago, back in October, I learned how to do that. And me and my partner, we've actually started climbing outdoors and it's the, just the fear of it, the fear of the height, the fact that you're a hundred feet above the ground and like you, I don't want to scare anybody, but like, yeah, you mess something up, you will fall and you will die. And, but it's, and it's so much more physically challenging. It's hard to explain, but like climbing in a gym with like plastic holds versus climbing in real rock in the real, you know, nature elements, wind, cold temperature, ice, all these things, it's very different. And so the fact that I was able to actually do that in a year and a half was something that I'm personally like, I think in some ways I'm even more proud of that than I am of my powerlifting or bodybuilding accomplishments. Cause as hard as those things are, this is something that like I was able to do quickly and like not many people ever get to that partly just because of the fear component of it. So I think that's another thing, which is a little out of the ordinary considering I'm a men's physique channel, I'm a, I'm a bodybuilder. And then I happen to do this on the side, but that actually might be the thing I'm most proud of in my fitness life. Yeah, I think that's awesome. You know, I, I think there's nothing wrong with getting fired up. It's funny, even I was making fun of Kyle the other day because he watched uh, some CrossFit documentary on uh, <laughs> Netflix and he, he came into the gym and he started doing all these CrossFit things. But like, you know, whatever gets you fired up and inspired, I, I think it's awesome. And yeah, I watched uh, Free Solo. Have you seen the Dawn Wall as yes, well or no? Yes, I love that. I've seen yeah. both of them like 10 times. Dude, I, that was, I, I, like, I, I can't, I can't, I, I saw free solo and I was amazed, not just at the difficulty, but 
let's be honest, the danger, uh, for those of you guys that are listening, I just to maybe like, you know, anybody who doesn't know, this is, uh, is a movie about Alex Honnold. It's been done by National Geographic. And it's this guy who literally climbs a 3,000 foot cliff in Yosemite, California, and he does so with no ropes. So he's literally climbing with nothing but his hands, his chalk, uh, his feet, and that's it. And if he falls, he's dead. And, and he, spoiler alert, he, um, he doesn't, he succeeds. He doesn't fall. <laughs> that's a good Otherwise, spoiler. This would, be, this would be a very different tone of conversation. Um, and then the Dawn Wall, I mean, it, they do use ropes, but the wall is so much more challenging. As someone who's gotten more into rock climbing, like they have these grades. I don't know how much you guys know, but like they have these grades for the difficulty of climb. It's like, it's this system where they go over like, it's like five point something. So like 5.1, 5 5.12, 5 5 point whatever. What they climbed at the Dawn Walls of 5.14D, which is so difficult. It's like, you, there's the, the, the amount of people on the planet Earth who can climb that is not a lot. We're talking probably less than 100 people. And that's if people who can climb it for like a little bit. The fact that they climbed 3,000 feet of it, and it took them eight days. They were sleeping on there. They were sleeping on the wall. The free, free solo is incredible due to the danger component. Dawn wall is incredible due to the sheer difficulty component. I watched these people, and I'm like, this is like, I didn't, when I see stuff like that, I'm like, I can't believe human beings are capable of this. This is just, I didn't think that it was physically possible for a human being with our, for our species to do these things. And then I see people doing that. And I'm just like, what the hell, man? Yeah, it, it's crazy. You know, I think there's something to be said too about like, you know, being, uh, you know, open to adding new components to your fitness to like kind of trying different, like even for me, I, I watched that I kind of got into for active rest days. Like I do a lot of bouldering mainly. Yeah. Like I have a good, I don't know if you've been to Boulder Park. It's a pretty sweet gym. I've seen it. I, it's, it's, it's one of the better ones in Toronto. I, I, yeah, it's really it's good. good. So I got like a, a pretty good pass there. I've been doing that for a while. I'm not, you know, super crazy about it, but I think it's impressive you made that commitment to going outside because uh, there's so like, there's a lot more uncertainty with it, right? You're like, oh, I got to learn to tie the ropes to belay properly, like yeah. all yeah. these things. And I think even with fitness, like a lot of people, like you hear all the time, like some people, oh, I'm scared to go into this area of the gym because everyone's huge there. Or I'm scared to use the bench press as a girl because I'm only doing like 65 pounds, you know, like what we, we speak to motivation a lot. Like what do you encourage the people to break their comfort, to be open to like trying to something new, to like compete, to do something you haven't done before? Like, you know, how do you, what, how do you kind of conceptualize like motivation or breaking through these things where it's uncomfortable, but you know, it's something that'll pay off. Well, there's a few things. Number one, to be blunt, a lot of people are kind of like worried about how they look. And I'm like, Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, the, and here, here, I'm going to give anybody who's listening an inkling because it's like, they might be entering the gym and if you're overweight or you're skinny or you're inexperienced and you think, oh man, the guys in the gym are kind of like jacked and big. That's us. That's, you know, that's Josh, Kyle, myself. That's, that is us. We are, because we've, we've put in the work. We've had the 600 pound deadlifts. We've, ha we've done the bodybuilding shows. So that's us. So anybody who's worried about that, you're like, oh, what are, what are those guys going to think? Let me speak for those guys. We don't give a crap. It's nobody's looking at you. Nobody's judging you. I, I would much rather judge. I'd rather judge no one, but if I was going to judge, I'm going to judge the guy who's sitting on his ass at home for the last three years saying, I should join a gym. I should diet. I should do this. I should do that. And then they do nothing. I'm much easier to judge those people than the people who are in the gym. Maybe they don't know what they're doing, but they're actively working out. Um, no, like uh, speaking from one of the guys who were in the gym, who is more jacked and more experienced, we don't care. In fact, we're probably the opposite. We are happy to help. I remember being 14. I remember being skinny. I was like 135 pounds, 5'11". I remember getting into the gym and seeing guys who were more jacked than me and not knowing and, and then being intimidated by them and kind of like almost thinking to myself, like, I wish, you know, I could ask them, but you know, you're shy, you're a young guy. And I'm like, I, I don't want to bother them, but I, I kind of would love, I would love to go up and ask them how to do this or that. And then time travel 15 years later, I'm on the other end of that. And now I'm thinking the opposite. Maybe I see a kid who's like, doesn't really know what he's doing. Maybe he's doing an exercise wrong or something. And I'm not judging you. In fact, I'm thinking like, ask me, 
come on. You're come killing on. me right now because this, I think the exact, this is like exactly what I say to a T. Like Kyle can t- like literally all the time. I'm like, no one cares. Like, especially when I see someone in the gym, like just trying or, you yeah. know, they're trying to learn. I'm like, wow, I respect you. Like, that's what it's about. You know, you're mm-hmm. getting in there. And it's funny too, because people in the gym are so weirdly nice when you ask them for something or you ask for help or even me, I'm like, Oh, I want to help people, you know, or sometimes you don't want to be annoying or something. And even with me and Kyle, there's one guy at the gym that used to be in there. He'd walk around all intense. He had head tats, face tats. This guy was massive, right? Like craziest guy. One day I had to ask him for something. I'm like, Hey, and he's like, Oh, for sure, man. No problem. Like have a great day. Props. I'm like, Hey, like, you know, everyone's just so awesome in there and it can be intimidating, but people are just so nice. And like, I try to tell people like, I guess maybe Corona messes it up a bit, but people are so receptive to like, you know, wanting to give advice to helping you out. And like, it's such a great, um, you know, ability to learn. 95% of people are like that. Yeah, sure. Sometimes there's like some people who might be not that nice, but also they're the minority and also screw them. Like nobody, like whatever. Okay. It's not something wrong with you. It's something wrong with them. And unfortunately, like welcome to planet earth. There are people who are jerks. That's, that's how, that's part of it. That's what it is. Um, in addition to what you also mentioned, like, you know, in addition to just like, oh, don't be afraid and don't be intimidated for, from a motivational standpoint, like, there, you can't, like, you can't live your life just doing this basic shit where you just go to work or go to school, you come home, you put like the bare minimum in the gym, if that, and then like you have all these things at the back of your mind. I'm like, dude, you're, we're all getting, what, what is it? After the age of 24, all of our bodies start dying. Like, I think it's like our bodies are like on an uphill, you know, we're growing until we're like, we're like 25 or something. And then literally from 25 onward, it's a slow death. There, I, I remember seeing this one chart where there's like a certain like rate of like cellular regrowth. And it's kind of like positive up until you're like kind of like in, you know, like in your mid twenties where you're actually like regrowing and synthesizing like, you know, cells faster than they die off. And then afterwards it's the opposite. So it's kind of like, obviously it's very slow. It's almost like, you know, it's, it's, you know, for maybe every 101 cells that die, there's 100 cells that are like regrown or something or, or it's fast. I, I can't remember the specifics of it, but the point is it's kind of like it accelerates. So I'm like, it's not like, oh, you know, like you're, everything's still good until you're like 40 and, or you're 40 or 50. It's like, no, literally at age 25, it's like we start our slow declines. So it's kind of like your life isn't that long. It's like you better do what you want to do because time is running out. And it's like, I mean, if you ever Google it, like what's the number one thing that people regret? This, this, this conversation is going to get real dark real fast. But like if you talk to people on their deathbeds, they always say the same things. They always said their regrets was never that they did something. It's always that they didn't do things, whether it be some kind of like a hobby or whether it be some kind of a big challenge, like starting a business or doing this or doing that. It's the only regret they ever have that is in terms of doing something is work. It's always like the number one, I think it was like, you know, the number one regret that people have last time I checked was that when they would do these interviews with people, it was that they worked too much in terms of their jobs or their businesses or whatever. And they didn't do enough other things, namely relationships, time with the family or things that make them happy, things that they are interested in. And so I'm like, I, I don't want to like give you negative and negative motivation. There's positive and negative motivation, positive mean being like, oh, it's so good. Negative being like, oh, like you better do it or else. But yeah, I got to say that because you better do it or else what? You're going to end up like 45 and thinking like, oh, remember when I was 25 and I wanted to get into rock climbing or when I was 25 and I was kind of overweight and I wanted to go to the gym, but I didn't. And now here I am at 45 and I'm even more overweight or wanted to do this, this and that. Like life is like way too short. And if you don't do these things, it's way too sad and boring to not do these things. And so the, the fear of getting started, the fear of being judged, the fe- all these things, yes, I get it. It is a bump that you got to get over, but I would much rather get over the fear of being judged or, or looking stupid, trying something new, whether it be working out or rock climbing or whatever it may be. I don't care if you're into friggin' formula one racing. I don't know. Like I'd, <laughs> I'd rather get over that bump than the, than the, 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 the fear of being judged and looking like a noob than the fear of, never trying. And then 20 years later, I'm sitting here an old man filled with regret. That's that scares the shit out of me a lot more than, oh, well, if I go into the gym and I'm so weak, I can't even lift the empty bar. Fine. Screw it. Again, we don't care. I'd rather you do that than do nothing at all. An empty bar is still infinitely heavier than nothing than you sitting on the couch. 
Love it, man. And, uh, you know, fear stands for false, appen- uh, false events appearing real as well. You know, that's oh, one of the things I've heard, heard many that. times. Um, but honestly, I feel like I'm hopefully everyone listening right now is like so fired up. I honestly right now want to end this interview and just take the world on and just lift heavy weights. I'm ready to go snowboarding. I'm ready to go <laughs> snowboard, do something. Um, and, and being fired up, this reminds me of like one of my favorite questions. Aside from you slapping yourself in the face, yes. what do you do? to get fired up. Like there's, there's lots of listeners right now, you know, you're working out from home. Um, and a funny story before you answer is, uh, you know, when we first worked out and we're hitting PRs, um, Igor was there and he had like 345 on the bar, whatever it was, 335. And I'll never forget, you know, him just slapping himself in the face and <laughs> the chest and the legs. And, uh, man, that, that was the, one of the best clips ever, but yeah, seriously, like, what do you do to like, I'm not always motivated. Most people aren't, you know, motivation comes and goes like, what do you do to just get fired up to stay consistent with everything? Well, I mean, I I do get, I'm the kind of person who does get motivation from other people. I think one of the reasons I started my YouTube channel was because I was motivated by other people who had YouTube channels. Like I started back in like 2015 ish. And at the time people who were like killing it and to, you know, some of them still are, would be guys like, you know, Steve Cook, Christian Guzman, uh, Matt Ogus. Uh, these are like, you know, big, big names in the fitness industry. And I took so much motivation from them that I'm like, I wanted to do it as well. They worked out. I work out. They have channels. I want a channel too. And so I took motivation from them. I've always been the kind of person that does get motivated by other people. Alex Honnold, we just mentioned, rock climbing world. Arnold Schwarzenegger, obviously, you know, bodybuilding world. Uh, Christian Guzman, uh, Steve Cook, you know, fitness, fitness, social media, YouTube, men's physique world, all these things. I do get motivated personally from other people. So what I do for like my workouts would be, I will like literally, I have like playlists. I have videos saved on my computer. I have like, you know, like I I follow these kind of like motivational kind of like channels for like bodybuilding or fitness. Um, And I will like watch their content and that will get me, get me motivated. Like the, the words these people say, the, the physiques that they have built. Um, like I I get very motivated externally by others. Some people out there, maybe they don't get that. And in that case, it's a bit more complicated because it's kind of like, it's like we're speaking in different languages. That's okay. There's people who have different motivational sources. People have like, uh, my, my girlfriend always talks about this. She always talks about how like, there's like different love languages, for example, uh, in terms of relationships, people sh- express, you know, feelings in different ways. Some people express it with gifts. Some people express it with like words of affirmation, physical touch. Everybody has these certain, or there's also like, you know how they talk about how people learn differently. There's like kinetic learners, audible learners, tact, all these different ways. So people function differently. And so motivation is one of those things as well. But for me, I'm the kind of person who does get it very much externally from other people. I see them doing the, I've always thought you do it. It's awesome. I want to do it too. You do it. And it makes you happy. It makes you proud. It makes you proud of yourself and your accomplishments. I want that feeling. And so I'm going to go do it as well. I've, I've, I've never, I've always been curious or like boggled by people who watch others do these amazing things. And then they don't do it themselves. There's always guys in like high school who would, you know, like no offense, but they would like know every single stat for like a basketball player ever. There was like this one guy, I remember, he literally knew everything about everything in the NBA for the last 10 years. And he himself was, no offense, uh, not the fittest individual. And he didn't really play. He didn't, he didn't play basketball that well. Or I was just like, if you know this stuff so much and you love it, why don't you do it? Why don't you try to get better at it? How could you know something so much? And then I, I don't just follow you and think, oh, that's cool, but it's never for me. No, I'm going to do it as well. And so that's why I personally get so much motivation from these bodybuilders, these rock climbers, these fitness athletes. I'm very external. I will literally bring up their Instagrams, bring up their YouTubes and get fired up. You can do it. I want to do it too. Why? I mean, we're both humans. Screw it. So that, that's personally for me, I, for other people, I, I don't know, but for me, ex- external motivation from other people is a big factor. Yeah, I relate to that hundred percent. I think it's easier probably for like, you know, us three who are probably more confident individuals. I think yeah. some people lack um, the confidence to believe they can do anything or they can have success or achieve these things. Right. But like, even to your point earlier, like a lot of it comes from overcoming the fear of failure right like you know i'll be like i'll ask some of my friends you want to come rock climbing like oh i don't know how to do that like maybe it's not safe i don't know like you know a big part of it is just you know understanding that 
challenge is a component of life and challenge is great. Like the reward of overcoming challenge is the best feeling, you know, and you have to go through those, uh, you know, the stages. I forget there was a quote I said recently, like we do a, a quote every mailbox Monday, one of our podcast episodes. And it was basically like how every beginner who was once a fool becomes an expert after repetition and practice and every expert was once the fool or something like that definitely butchered it but you know you have to go through that and then I love that idea too of like looking to people to uh, you know kind of find that source of inspiration I have a ton of respect for people that do it even when everything's stacked against them like the Arnold's for instance right like he literally had nothing going for him fitness was weird bodybuilding was weird he wasn't even the right country for it like but people that are just so like focus on that vision just have like such an upper hand and he a, a big thing for him like i've read like I think he's had like three autobiographies i've read them all and for a big <laughs> thing for him like myself was external motivation i remember like there was like stories about how he in like the 50s when he was like 14 he would plaster like these magazines all over his walls to the point where his mom thought he was like strange or something uh, especially back <laughs> this is like 1950s europe so not exactly the most uh, progressive times so if there's like a young boy putting pictures of like <laughs> scantily clad men on the walls uh, at the time they were like what's going on here i think his mom had to take him to like a therapist or something because they were concerned and um yeah so like he because he got external motivation from these bodybuilders and his biggest idol was reg park a body a south african bodybuilder uh, I, I believe from the 50s and 60s who played uh, he was also a movie star and he played, um, he played Hercules in these old school black and white movies. So like, it's interesting. He got his motivation from Reg. And then so many people got, his mot- got their motivation. Like I am someone who got mot- my motivation from Arnold. And fortunately, I've been lucky enough to you know, build up a, a decent sized following. And I think that to some people out there, I am that motivation to them. It's this, it's just, it's this constant chain of somebody looks up to someone and then someone looks up to them and it just it's this it's again it's like this chain of motivation and so like i I think again arnold to a certain extent was also an individual who got it from someone else i feel like you just have to find someone if you don't have anyone then then that's difficult but if you can find someone and emulate them and and not even emulate them but get motivated by them find an idol find a goal find someone who has done something similar and use that it's it's a lot more helpful than doing it completely fresh uh, then it, it's a bit more challenging, not impossible, but then that's even more worthy of respect if you're able to completely self-motivate without looking at anybody else. Yeah, I think we have like, we're in such a cool time because we literally have like instruction manuals for anything, right? Like yeah. even us, we want to make a YouTuber like, oh, Christian Guma, we're Yusuf, like sweet, like what did they do? What kind of videos yeah, did they exactly. make? Like it's internet's such an advantage now, like even fitness, like you watch any of our videos, podcasts, your videos, like all the, we have so many cool resources too. Like now I feel like there's less of a barrier to entry than ever. So like you said, like there really isn't a great excuse to not do things, right? You want to kind of get out there and get things done. That brings us into a fun question. We like to ask all our guests, like what are three things you wish you knew before you started lifting or you wish you did differently, like from early on in your journey, if there's any. Mm. It's a tough one. <laughs> There's always yeah. some, that's for sure. There's always things we look back on and just like, I wish. Chicken, broccoli, wish. rice. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my things, you know, clean, too clean eating is one of mine for sure. But I'm, for me, I'm I think a big emphasis was just, uh, n- number one is, is just the unfortunate factor that let's be honest, in the fitness industry, a lot of people are using steroids. They're using performance enhancing drugs. They're using all that stuff, which is fine. But the problem is that, especially back then, now, fortunately, a lot more people are, a bit more open about it, which is great because now you know, oh, this person's on something. And so they are not the best frame of reference or frame of comparison for myself. Uh, back then, that was totally not the case. It was so taboo back then that nobody talked about this stuff, especially if they were on it. Nobody was open about this stuff in, in fear of being burned at the stake like a witch. So because of that, it was very hard to have somebody to, it was very hard to establish what a standard is for a natural physique. Everybody thought Arnold Schwarzenegger was 100% natural. He just has a lot of chicken and protein powder. And so that was a problem because I had, like, I wasn't really aware of what is achievable. Now, obviously there's so many other things that come into play, like genetics, just, you know, somebody, there are people out there who are gonna build twice as much muscle and have to work. Yeah, it sucks, welcome to reality. But that being said, it's still annoying when like you don't have a good standard or frame of reference for what is achievable from a natural bodybuilder 
given proper diet, nutrition, training, all that stuff. Like I still remember looking at guys and thinking like, oh, that's my goal. And then a few years later, I'm like, what was I thinking when he's like eight, like six feet tall, 230 pounds, 6% body fat. I'm like, mm, probably not the, there's probably something else going on here. So that's a problem. Uh, the other issue I think would be, I had a, I had a pretty decent reliance on supplements. Like, you know, the protein powder, the this, the that, like, I thought it was, I thought the supplements did something more than food when no, they're just, that's either, they, <laughs> I, either they don't work or if they do, they just do the exact same thing as food. Like protein powder is just like milk powder. That's it. It's not nothing. There's not, not much special, special stuff in there, right? Like creatine is great. It's not magic. Anything you buy for $30 at your local Walmart, probably not, you know, not magic, <laughs> probably not steroids. Uh, BCA, same thing. 20 bucks at Walmart. Great. Not, not that special. Not going to give you anything that you couldn't otherwise get from a chicken breast. And um, so, I mean, yeah, supplements can be absolutely helpful, which is why I continue to use them to this day, even 15 years into my fitness and bodybuilding career. But I think I had a much bigger reliance on them at the time because again, this is, you know, I started working out in like 2000, like seven or something at the time it's like you know everybody out there is talking so much about the 17 kinds of protein powder they eat and not about the uh, <clears throat> the vitamin s they take that was a bit of a problem so i i think those are two issues that i had from besides that from a training from a training oh also you know i just i trained not the best i just go in and do a bro split which is is fine but like i, I just do crazy amounts of volume and i do it like once every seven to ten days i it took me like a full week or more to recover and i think i probably do a bit more frequency, but that's, you know, I still, I still worked out hard. And I mean, at the end of the day, like, I, I feel like if you're a beginner, if you just go in the gym, it's, it's hard. That's another thing to anybody out there who's listening, who's maybe like, Oh, it's so complicated. What do I do? I need all these different training systems and this and that. No, it's not. It's, if you're a beginner and your body's so primed for training and your body's and training is such a new stimulus for your body, you can go in the gym and work out with like a program. That's like literally four out of 10 and you're still going to grow. If you go in the gym and just like, hey, what's this? A bench press. Okay, I'll do it. It's going to work. I don't care if you do five reps, 15 reps, as long as you actually go to within a reasonable degree of difficulty, you don't stop like seven reps shy of failure. It's going to work. So that was the same case for me. Like maybe what I did wasn't perfect, but hell, I, I still put on muscle. It's again, it's, 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 hard. it's really hard to screw things up in my opinion, if you're a beginner, as long as you put in basic work with basic exercises. I mean, who doesn't know what a bench press is? Yeah, no, 100%. It's funny, too, because uh, do you know who Craig Capruso is? Yes. Yeah, we, we actually just had him on, and he was talking how he started competing. He was, like, just kind of naive to it. You know, he was doing fine. Um, and then, he, uh, you know, he got on the sauce for competing. He said yep. he was open about it. And yep. he's, like, at the time, it was kind of, like, 50-50. But now he's, like, everyone's on it who's competing, basically. Like, you, you need to be on it. And I think oh, yeah. Kyle had, like, a pretty fun question there, right? Yeah, I have a question because, like, even the other day, I was just – like, I like people knowing, hey, listen, you know, this is what's completely natural. You know, we're at a natural potential. Like, here's what's – your, you know, what you're capable of. And, uh, you know, even the other day, I was just on Instagram looking. I'm like, man, this guy has natural body – builder's profile i'm like oh man yeah, yeah really all the time. Yeah, yeah. so you you're someone who has done more research than probably anyone on like how to spot a true natural you know like sure, yeah. what do you usually like look for you know to to know if someone's on the vitamin s steroids yeah. you know all that good stuff like just yeah it, it, so it's a very complicated question i think i was one of the first people who really talked about this i had some videos that went somewhat viral back in like 2016 2017 on this topic and at the time so the problem is I've always been a very quantitative individual. I believe that anything subjective is kind of bullshit. I'd like to look at numbers. I like to look at like object, like again, numbers don't lie. Everything else, people, people lie. Subjective things like visual estimates. Yeah, it's, it's anything that's subjective is, is, is kind of bullshit to a certain extent, but I like numbers. So I used to look at things like the fat-free mass index, the FFMI, which is kind of like the BMI, but this one looks at uh, like, the, like it says, fat-free mass, as opposed to total body mass, which is the BMI. And then there have been some studies, not great studies, not a lot of studies, but still science nonetheless, that looked at and tried to estimate uh, pretty much at what point is it too much in terms of fat-free mass for an individual at, fifth, at X height that it becomes impossible from a natural standpoint. And I did that. And pretty much back then, the conclusion I came to was that like, once you're over 25 FFMI, like, yeah, it's probably still possible, but it starts to get really, really 
less likely. And so I still believe that to a certain extent. I mean, some people have tried to come out and disprove that. And I'm like, hey, look, it's not perfect, but it's still the best, the closest thing to like a legit standard, a scientific quantitative standard for what is achievable naturally or not. It's the closest thing we've got. And until someone comes along with a better alternative, I'm going to have to look at that to a certain extent. However, that doesn't that, that, that's not enough because, okay, for example, if you look at someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger, FFMI 28, which is obviously pretty damn high. And you guys got like Phil Heath was at 35. I think Ronnie Coleman is at like 40, which is ridiculous. <laughs> off the and charts. Off the charts, yeah. But that doesn't, so, okay, fine. What if you have someone who looks good, but they're not that massive? There are plenty of guys out there. I can guarantee you that have, might have FFMI scores of like 21, 22, 23, which is still, according to the videos I've done, and according to the science I referenced, that's not over the natural, the Mac, that, that's not, it's not like, it's not like Arnold, it's not like Ronnie Coleman. That being said, there are still people using this kind of stuff. That's where it gets more complicated. What people fail to realize is that, you know, steroids, depending on how much you use and depending on your genetic response to them, a lot of people will not just blow up overnight and look enormous. There are plenty of people out there. I'm telling you right now, there are people out there using stuff um, who are going to be smaller than the three of us than like who might be fatter, so less lean than the three of us. Because again, depending on how hard, I mean, at the end of the steroids aren't magic, you still have to put in the work, you still have to diet, you still have to have ideally a decent genetic response to them. So that being so, it's very difficult. But so that's when you have to start looking into other things. And I think two things that you can look at, which are not as quantitative, again, the, unfortunately, it's such a difficult question, you have to look at it through multiple variables. Another variable is consistency of physique. There are guys in the industry, I think you guys probably know of a few maybe, who seem to fluctuate. They go up, they go down. And when they go down, there's always a reason. There's always like, oh, it's because I injured myself. Or it's because, oh, my goals changed. Now I'm more focused on whatever. Or this or that. Or, oh, I, was, I wasn't focusing on training as much, but then now I am. Is that the case? Or is it just you cycling on and off? Like... It, it seems a bit more reasonable and I'm not going to name any names. I can maybe, I, mean, I think maybe you guys know who I'm talking about, or I can say some examples off later, but yeah, it's like, it's very convenient when like somebody will look like just jacked. And then like four months later, it's like, they just like, like, like they just deflated like a balloon. Yeah. And there's like, some people in my gym. Like, I'm like, dang, this guy's massive. You know, like, I'm like, what the heck? And then I'll see them in like a few months. And I'm like, what happened? Like, there's yeah, no way, like yeah, <laughs> two different on. people. Did you forget how to lift? Like, did you? <laughs> they forgot so, to pump them some up before at the balloon there, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, th so that's one thing. Cause, cause again, like if you are someone who, if you are someone whose physique, once you've hit your genetic potential, let's be honest, your physique's pretty much going to stay the same. You're not going to get bigger. You can get leaner if you diet down, but that's, but like your physique for the most part, once you've been training for a solid six or seven years and you've been training properly, you're pretty much maxed out. I mean, hell, I got to be honest, I've looked pretty much the same size wise for the last five years because I've been training for 15 years. So once I hit my genetic potential, it's like, okay, you're done, give or take. Um, so when you see guys, guys who are truly have a higher, again, not, not like guys who are natural, but have a higher chance in my estimation of being natural are the people who have relatively consistent physiques, primarily from a size um, standpoint. Um, people who don't necessarily like blow up or, because the thing is, it's like, Again, if you're at a genetic potential, you've been training for a long time, your body's done for the most part. You know, the, the rate of muscle gain is, it's the law of diminishing returns. It's not like, okay, 20 pounds in your first year, 10 pounds in your second year, then five, four, three, two. And then randomly, once you get popular on social media, after nine years, it's like, okay, never mind. I gained 10 pounds of muscle again because I discovered some magic training plant. No, but my, my special protein powder. My special protein powder, <laughs> yeah, which you can buy right now for the low payment of 1999. <laughs> it, that doesn't happen. So when I see people kind of do that, it's a bit of a red flag because genetic potential is maximized over time. You don't just naturally discover, oh, I had all these potential gains hidden away, you know, for a rainy day fund, which I just happened to discover now. That doesn't happen. Uh, the other thing, which is, again, this is, this is where it gets to somewhat subjective and it's kind of crappy to say, but I mean, look, if you're open about it, then, then you're open about it. Then we know that you're on something. But there are guys who aren't open about it. In fact, there are guys who are the opposite. There's some guys who just don't talk about it, which is fine. If you don't want to talk about it, you're just ambiguous, whatever. It's up to the individual to interpret. But there's some guys who do say they are not, they're natural when, when they're not. And in those cases, if they are using something, then they're a dick. But then you have to ask yourself, 
what is the moral character of that individual? Is that person someone who morally looks like the kind of person who would maybe do that? You know, is that the, you know, there are people out there who seem like quality individuals, like you two, for example. I've known you for, you know, over the years. You don't strike, you don't strike me as the kind of people who would be doing this. And if you did, you'd be open. You wouldn't lie about it. But the kind of people who do this, I mean, at the end of the day, you are literally le a living a multi multiple year fraud, especially if you have built up a sizable following. Like you are by definition a fraud. And so to be that kind of a person, you need to have a certain set of morals, which are maybe different from you or I, or potentially even the standard. So you have to ask themselves, you know, who are we talking about here? Are we talking about a saint? Are we talking about a person who's got a very positive attitude, who's always been a good person, who tries to be honest? Or are we talking about a person here who's a bit questionable? Are we talking about the kind of person who's kind of a, a bit of a dick, a bit of a hothead, a bit of a like, you know, somebody who you look at them, you're like, maybe you're not the kind of person I'd want to be friends with. Because in that case, maybe he's also the kind of person who would do this. So if you look at an individual who has had, so in these two cases, if you look at an individual who, even though they have a good physique, if they've been consistent for a long period of time, they haven't really had massive swings in their size, and they look like someone who is morally a good person, at least from what you can tell on social media, understanding that, let's be honest, social media is just, it's not who you are, it's who you present yourself to the world. So you have to take everything with a grain of salt. But if you take those two things, it can kind of also help you determine personally whether or not they may be a natural individual. No, I think you, you nailed that one. I, I follow along 100% because, you know, me and Kyle always say it's too bad that people kind of distort fitness. Like a lot of it, you know, is people taking advantage of people truthfully. Like even if you want to get super rich, you know, you just get on the sauce, you know, say it was all thanks to the keto diet and your special keto stuff. And yeah. fortunately, people buy into it, right? So you definitely have to be the kind of person that's willing to, you know, kind of be unfair with that and what sucks is then you know you're someone who's just sort of fitness you buy the supplement it doesn't work for you you give up you have less self-belief and I think like that's where my problem is like you know if you want to do that do that you know be honest about it but it's not fair to say hey you can look like me if you do this and obviously with Instagram girls too and plastic and all these different kind of things you'll see right like you'll have people that are just like oh do my booty workout and they're probably not really working out you know they're probably just doing some other things there's some people that are great don't get me wrong it's yeah, just it, it's a weird time you know especially from when where we started it was like I feel like when when we started YouTube it was really like informational it was cool and like more than ever it's getting uh it's getting kind of funky out there right <laughs> anything that's a business this is, this is what's going to happen I mean, unfortunately because like it, in the business of fitness at the end of the day it's primarily the business of social media and so like it's it's unavoidable this is this has been a common even back when I started in 2015, this, I said this back then, I say this right now. Unfortunately, anything that's a business, there's going to be incentives for people to do things, which it might be something that you or I maybe would not want to do. And this is, again, where that second thing I mentioned is the moral component of it. Are you the kind of individual who would do that? Are you the kind of individual who do, you know, does other things, for example? Like, for example, like, you know, if you have someone, who is kind of like, uh, oh yeah, like uh, I, I'm, you know, uh, I'm jacked as hell and I'm natural, but then you find out that he's doing like 17 other recreational drugs. It's kind of like, let me get this straight. You're okay doing like this, 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 this. I'm doing like Coke. I'm doing like all this other sketchy crap, but then steroids is where I draw the line. I'm like, mm, mm. I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with that. That was like the whole Z's time too, right? Like, yes. you know, all of them, they're like out at the club, like doing who knows what. Oh, and yeah. like, I don't know. And they're all like this half, you know, the half natty crew. And like, that, that was, that was full weird natty. times. <laughs> that People was, are probably like, what are you talking about? But it was an interesting time. Yeah, that was, that was, that was like 2010. That's like old school. Yeah. He was like the first pseudo fitness social media guy. It was like him. Then it was like the Steve Cooks, the Christian Guzmans, the Matt Oguses, yeah. all these guys. He was like, he was like the beta test for everything. Yeah. <laughs> funny times. love him man but yeah that's why even like you know going back to like what you were just saying there it's it's cool like that's why i feel like you know uh, we we mesh pretty well it's like you you know after knowing you for over five years you've you've stayed your course you've you've stuck with your morals you've you know you, you've offered the same services you've got a couple great sponsors and even most people don't even realize you know the amount of emails we get a day like the yeah. only thing probably in 250 episodes we've promoted is our coaching and 
maybe we've had one sponsor that we're not with now. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, there's not many people out there like this. I feel like between us and you and everything like that. So it's cool to, you know, have you on here. It is. Yeah. It's, this is the one, I mean, the fitness industry has changed a lot. I think over these last five years in, in, in some ways we, you know, we've kind of like definitely stuck to, uh, there's some people who've kind of like changed. Some people haven't, I think, the three of us are pretty consistent, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's up to the, it's up to the audience. It's up to the viewer to decide, but yeah, we're, I think we're, we're fairly consistent. And th- that's one of the reasons why, like, for example, people think like Igor, you sit here and you preach this whole natural lifestyle. And I'm like, no, I preach the honest lifestyle. If you want to do that stuff, that's okay. And I'm still having written it off for myself. There's actually the very viable chance. I think a, a solid 50, 50 chance that I will make that jump. Probably, you know, like uh, not, not until I'm older, uh, it's very possible. Like, I mean, even right now, like we, I think we have like, we've got into a new age. Have you guys noticed how like, it seems like every other person is on, is on TRT now? Yeah, I don't know. Like I, I know in the States, like your doctor after a certain age, or like I said, I heard them talking about this on Joe Rogan too. Like yeah. I'm, I've never really like my whole thing. Like I kind of started for fitness and health. Like I want to get big for a while, but like more than anything, you know, to me, it's just about being healthy and like looking great. And that's kind of what I've clung into. But like, that's exactly it. You know, if you want to take advantage, you know, like I've trained people who have, are on it, you know, and they've mm-hmm. told me and it's like, okay, no problem. Like, you know, thanks for being honest. And, you know, but it is interesting. The optics of it's what's tough. Like another interesting thing to bring up is like um, celebrities, you know, like all like, you know, the Marvel superheroes and stuff. It's like, yeah. I got this big benching or doing a hundred pushups and you're like, ah, like, with the resources they have, let's be honest, you know, like you said, they're walking around nothing. And then all of a sudden they look like, you know, Greek gods. <laughs> that, that's the thing that, that, that's, that ties into what I just mentioned a few minutes ago is the inconsistency of it. You see guys who just like blow up and then shrink down for roles. I'm like, your body doesn't work like that. You can't yeah, just no turn <laughs> muscle on. And also you can't turn muscle off. There have been times in my life, when, like it's been a while, but like years ago, I remember this one time back when I was in like college, I kind of like quit lifting for a short period of time because I'm like, I need to focus on my exams. I need to focus on my studies. What am I doing? I'm, you know, like I've got like an organic, I've got like organic chemistry, which is the hardest course in all of like my science program. And like, I got to bust ass on that. I don't have time to be spending five hours a week in the gym. And then there was a period of time when I did pretty much like quit lifting. I didn't track my diet at all. I mean, I still eat a decent amount of meat just because I'm a man and I like meat. But like I wasn't tracking my protein intake. I wasn't lifting out more than like once or twice a week. And even then it was really half-assed. And the muscle didn't fall off. I feel that like as a natural, it takes longer and harder to build muscle. But once you have it, you need to try hard to lose it. Like it's it's not just, I mean, sure. Yeah, you can you can deflate a little bit, but like, you don't, you don't lose 30 pounds just because you start training half-assed or you, or you don't eat as good as you used to. So when I see some of these, like, you know, in the movie, the movies, and they just like go up and down 30 pounds. I'm like, that's, that your body doesn't work like that. That's kind of indicative of what I mentioned earlier is the, it's the inconsistency of it, which is a bit of a red flag. But then again, also like, what do I care? Because, uh, you know, he's not competing. If you're competing in a natural organization, then obviously that's a problem. These people are not, they're in movies. And also like, look, if you're playing a superhero, it's like, yeah, you kind of need the physique to go with it. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of libertarian from this standpoint. I feel that if you're an adult, you can do whatever the hell you want with your body, as long as you understand it. Even if you don't, again, it's your will, you're welcome to be as ignorant as you choose to be, as long as you were an adult, as long as you were not hurting anybody else, then do whatever you want. It's kind of a dick move if you do it without honesty and if you lie about it but besides that like yeah you're an adult do whatever the hell you want which is why i'm totally okay with it i personally don't want to go down that path yet and whether i do in the future again i don't know 50 50 probably some i'm not gonna even think about that decision until i'm a little bit older i don't think there's any point in somebody doing it in their 20s but if you've been training for 15 years and things are starting to go down again at 25 we start to slowly age so once you're over that hill the hell if you've been training for a while that's a decision you can make and i'm totally okay with that i have no issue with this kind of stuff there there's a lot of positives there's a lot of negatives but there's some positives which i could attest to and that's up to the individual um like for example josh you mentioned a minute ago that you're all about like living that healthy lifestyle and building a good physique and that's true but some people out there like myself are like i'm all for that but i'm also like yeah i could really like i mean i i 
I, hell, I see like Arnold. I'm like, listen, I'm not going to get to that level. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. But I'm like, I, I do... I do think I'm like I do think about that, and it, it is it is obviously there's always that temptation, and also just the ability to train. Like I think about it, like right now I'm you know I'm I've been training for like over a decade, and I'm approaching thirty, so I'm not like I'm not old, but I'm not nineteen anymore. Right now, if I have a hard workout, it will kick me in the ass recovery wise. Like right now, if I have a good hard workout in terms of volume and everything. I used to be like, back when I was younger, I'm like, okay, hey, I'll do it on Monday. And then by Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, I can go again. Right now, I'm out of it for like a week. I'm like, shit, oh, ever. So I either have to like recover longer or I need to shorten my workouts in terms of volume and intensity. And I hear about, you know, obviously if you cross over to that side, then you can just go balls to the wall like every other day because your recovery is just super physiological. Now, in that case, so that's why there is certain temptations. And again, I get, so that's why for me personally, it's a decision I'll make later in life. It's, it, I, it's not 100% either direction. It's 50-50. And again, I'm very libertarian with this kind of stuff. So uh, you can do whatever you want. Just again, it's just don't, don't, don't lie about it. And there's no need to. Back in 2008, yeah, I get it. You, the second you come out and say like, well, this one time I, I, I touched creatine, everyone's like, oh, you're fired. You lose all your sponsors. Now you've got companies, some of them are very open about it. They're just like, listen, we get it. We don't want you to sit there and lie and tell people that Ronnie Coleman is only taking broccoli and chicken. Um, so like they're a bit more open about it. So that's why at least back then you had a little bit of an excuse because you're like, listen, I have to be un not, I have to be dishonest about this stuff because my livelihood depends on it. But now it's like, no, it doesn't. You're just being a dick. Yeah, no, hundred percent. It's funny, you know. It's like the it's like the dark side, right? It's like yeah. there's so much power over there, you know. But yeah. <laughs> you would think you, you got to use it right. It's yeah. I saw one article on like um, some form, you know, and it was like why everyone should try it once in their life, and they're like, you know, the recovery, the intensity, the you know. But it, like you said, it's a personal decision. I guess it's like drugs in general, you know. It's like a, you, it's a big personal decision. I do not yeah. believe in that everyone should try it once. I'm like, there are some people who can try it. But, and even that's not everybody. It's not even most people. It's a very small percentage of people out there. And it's for people who are specifically looking again, if you want to be like me, like a lot of people out there look at my physique, especially when I'm competing and it's like, that's the goal. And I'm like, good, then you're fine. I did it. You can do it too. My genetics are not, I don't think they're bad, but they're not anywhere near world-class hell. I don't think they're even like good. I don't think they're even towards like the top 25th percentile genetic wise. And if I can do it, a lot of people out there can do it as well. Now, if you want to look like Z's, if you want to look like Steve Cook, if you want to train like, you know, guys like Steve Cook or, or like that, then you're going to have to like cross over to that side. And if you want to do it or not, that's your, that's your decision, but you better think it through because a lot of times it's not something you can just do and try. I'm going to try. It's not like I'm trying a new recipe. I'm trying, I'm trying to bake this new chocolate chip cookie recipe. No, some people do it. And then like either psychologically or physiologically, like you're on it for life. So like I like for like they're they're guys who've done it and they're just like they've talked about it how like I will I'm doing this stuff I'm in my twenties and there's a good chance I'll be on it for the rest of my life because once you turn your balls off it's not that easy to turn them back on so it's 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 a big it's a big question you want to ask yourself yeah like where I really try to dissuade people is like you need to learn to walk before you can sprint right yeah. like you gotta at least like spend time in the gym like build you know take advantage of all the great things you can do naturally like optimize your training your nutrition your lifestyle accountability all these facets you know and then make an educated decision some people just look at someone or want yo bro I want to get huge like what should and they're like whoa you know like let, let's slow it down and I guess for my final question here like we're big we call it the, the stool of fitness you know like I said there there's your training you know like everything relative to that there's your nutrition and then there's your accountability and lifestyle so things like consistency sleep water all these things you know if your cousin comes up to you at a fam jam and they say, listen, it's about time. I want to get fit. You know, what are, it's a very big question I know, but what are some things you advise as someone, especially because you make such great videos on getting shredded? Like how can someone really kickstart their journey, you know, going from zero or maybe 10 to a hundred, you know, like what changes do you recommend someone can kind of make to really produce change? I mean, okay. See, from a mentality standpoint, the number one thing that people need to understand is that it's a lot simpler than it looks. It's a lot simpler than people make it out to be. The problem is on social media and in the business of fitness, you can't make money if you tell people just how simple it is. Because if you, if you oversimplify it, then they're going to be like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for your advice. I don't need you anymore. That's kind of the problem. But if you tell people, oh, it's really complicated. It's a rocket science. And you need to hire me for a billion dollars. 
and you need to buy this supplement and this training plan. It's so, so, so complicated. It's like, you know, it, it's like rocket science. Then that's great because you might earn a bit more by selling, you know, X service or product or whatever. But the problem is you also scare people away. So what I'm t- trying to tell people is like, look, at the end of the day, like, we all do these things. We're in the industry. You guys, myself, we all are in the business of this, you know, whether it be coaching, supplements, programs, and it's, it's helpful and it's worth it. Otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. I'm not going to sell something which I don't think is helpful to the average individual. That being said, it's not that complicated. It is not particle physics. So a lot of people out there erroneously believe because they see like a thousand different videos. We've all seen those videos where it's like, don't train this way. This is killing your gains. The worst exercise. Stupid Facebook ads. <laughs> like, just shut. I mean, like, look, at the end of the day, like so people, I have questions every day of people coming up to me, like, in, or like people in my, my, my coaching clients or emails. And they're like, Igor, I'm so freaked out. Do I do four sets of eight reps or three sets of 12 reps? I'm like, they're both going to work. Yeah, you might have like, you know, like one is a bit higher vol- higher reps, the other one's lower, you, you, you know, th- th- you might recover. I mean, like they're both going to work. Like, again, it's, if, if you're, especially if you're a beginner, it is difficult for you to mess this up. Do I train chest, you know, one time a week or two times a week? Well, I mean, if, if you know, maybe one is better, but if you do it, if you choose the other option, it's still going to work. It's not like one is 100% optimal, the other one's zero. It's just a difference of 80% optimal, 60% optimal, 70% optimal, 90%. They're all still, they're all still way ahead of zero. So I would tell, you know, you mentioned like I have a cousin who comes up to me. The first thing I have to tell them is it's a lot simpler, relax. It's hard for you to mess things up. So just to get him motivated. The other thing I would tell him is that uh, number one is nutrition. Everybody, I think when they get started, they just focus so much on training because they're like, I need, I need, I want to build my biceps, so I'm going to train my biceps. I want to build my chest, so I'm going to train my chest. They don't understand that it's kind of like training is just the stimulus. The actual facilitation of that growth comes from your, your, micro, you know, your macronutrient intake, your calories. Like there's so many people out there, especially myself when I was a kid, they start working out and they just go balls to the wall on the bench press and all these things. And then they don't actually look at their their, their diet. They don't actually look at their protein intake. They don't look at all these things. When in reality, I think from a fat loss standpoint, nutrition is number one. And from a muscle gain standpoint, nutrition is tied from number one with training. So like it's either number one or it's tied. It's always going to be at the, the top. And people don't realize that. I think a lot of people underestimate nutrition. Training is great. But at the end of the day, it's kind of hard to mess it up. We've all seen the 7,000 different videos about like the best science-based ways to train this. That's great. But like nutrition is going to be so much more, in my opinion, important, especially from a fat loss standpoint. You can get shredded without having the best workout plan. But I don't think you can, but if you have a good, amazing workout plan, I don't think you're going to get shredded without uh, at least a decent dietary strategy. You can't outwork a bad diet but from a fat loss standpoint, I think you could out eat a bad training program. Not bad, but just like, you know, mediocre. Because again, it's just like less carbs, more protein, a bit more cardiovascular activity, and boom, you're 12% body fat. Yeah, like you said, so much of it is semantics, right? Like you could do this or you could do that. And a big thing we're big on is more so like optimizing, right? Like just trying to block out the noise, just get started and, you know, kind of focus on what's important. Like you said, like taking care of the nutrition, just actually getting to the gym training, like, you know, and then eventually you can, once you have these habits, try to do it better and better. And yeah, that, that was an awesome answer there. Um, any, you got anything, Kyle? Sorry, no, I know I've been talking. No, a lot. <laughs> no, that was that was perfect. Yeah, even just the eighty twenty principle I was talking about, right? Like, what are the twenty percent actions that are going to get you eighty percent of the results? I'd say most people are focused on the, you know, the stuff that means such a makes such a small difference. And you know, you probably know this just as uh, well. You know it exactly as well as us, um, just with all the coaching clients and everything. But um, I wanted to also ask you, like, what is your favorite quote what's one thing that you know is if there's any that would like you know that fires you up that motivates you you know we always like to you know huge fans of quotes um so yeah i'm curious to hear that it's putting putting me on the spot uh, i know I, I know none of these questions by the way we talked about beforehand so i yeah it's true this is totally this is but here's a here's a good one um so there's a couple but this one i actually this is from rogan's podcast joe rogan's podcast and he heard this from someone else again it's just like i mentioned earlier there's the chain of motivation me and Arnold and Arnold and Reg Park and Reg Park and someone else. There's also these chains of quotes. He said in one of his episodes, one of his favorite quotes, when I heard this, I'm like, that is good. It was like, um, most men leave, sorry, most men live lives of quiet desperation. And I'm like, it is so true. The majority, that's what's sad, not even a minority, but the majority of men 
leave these, they live these like quiet, desperate lives where there's so many things that they dream of, where they're desperate to do, but they never get off their ass. And I'm like, this is just digs at the back of my mind. Cause like all those things I mentioned throughout this podcast, again, 25, happy birthday, slow death starts. Like it's so like, it's you like, you're internally desperate, but you need to be desperate to go out and do these things because your life is ticking away. And like, again, I'm much more afraid of looking like an idiot or falling at the rock climbing gym or, or not pick or, or failing under a heavy squat. I'm much less afraid of those things than I am of never doing these other things because one day you're going to wake up and you blink and congratulations, you're 65 and you're too old to do half of these things and your knees hurt and your back hurts and you've got a mortgage and two kids and this and that and all this other crap. And I'm like, God, I, I, another, I, the other thing is like, you, you have no choice. You have no choice. Whatever these things are, right? Whether it be like, I want to start a business. I want to get into fitness. You don't have a choice. People think like, ah, I, I don't know if I should do it. You don't have a choice because if you do it, great, you did it. And if you don't do it, I think what's going to happen is I call it the Walter White syndrome. You guys have seen Breaking Bad, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like eventually what happens, oh, next thing you know, you wake up, you're Walter White, you're 50 years old, you snap and you go crazy. And in, in his case, it went a little far because he became a drug kingpin. But for the other people, it's, it's a similar thing. You just, you're going to go crazy. So like, you don't have a choice. You either do it or it's going to eat away at the back of your mind until you wake up one day, you're 50. And then you either try to do it then if your body can still do it, whatever it may be, or you just go crazy. And you know, whatever things are getting in the way right now, like I've got kids, I've got this, I've got that. You're going to end up resenting those things in the future. And then it's going to end up hurting them. So whatever it is that you want to do, gym, rock climbing, starting a business, uh, going back to college, uh, something, you know, whether it be financial, educational, physical, I don't care. You need to do it because if you don't do it now and you don't do it later, which is not as good of an option because it's later, then you're going to just resent everything and everyone in your life that stopped you from making that decision. And again, you're going to go Walter White mode and maybe you're not going to turn to a meth dealing drug kingpin, but you're going to this is when the midlife crisis bullshit comes in. You know who doesn't have a midlife crisis? People who did all their stuff earlier in life. The Arnold Schwarzenegger ain't having a midlife crisis. The guy who's been sitting on his ass at a dead end job doing nothing, who never even stepped foot in a gym for 30 years, that guy's the one who's going to mentally break down at age 50 because they realize they wasted the last 30 years of their life. Oh, yeah, the Heisenberg syndrome, right? I guess yeah, Arnold's yeah. only a midlife crisis was his nanny, right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, like that, that's so true. I think you tie that together uh, incredibly, incredibly well, man. And it was freaking awesome to have you on. I'm pretty sure me and Kyle and you could uh, keep talking for six hours. But yes. um, you know, if you want to hear part two, definitely you know, spam his social media, our social media, uh, anything you want to plug right now, any where you want people to go. Uh, yeah, just uh, you want to see my channel. Vitruvian physique. They want to see it. Yeah, or you can just type in, uh, you literally type in Igor. I'm pretty, it's one of the benefits of having my weird Russian name is that there's like three semi popular Igors out there in the world. <laughs> so there, it's literally four letters. You type it into, you type it into YouTube and we're good. I have to, I have to check there. I put up four. I'm like, wait a second, is this, is this the right number? <laughs> That's pretty sweet. We're we're still getting taken over by like Colossus of Rhodes, Colossus Tyler the Creator. We got a long See, way to go. Well, but if you had a weird Russian name, you wouldn't you have that You own Igor, problem. man. Yeah, we got the most right. famous Igor on here. Oh, Tyler One the of... Creator is Igor too, man. No, yeah. Look the back. issue is when you search Igor on YouTube, there's um there's a, there's the a lot of other stuff. Yeah, yeah Tyler so you gotta, Creator. You got to look up Igor Fitness. You got you got to throw okay. at least oh, a little yes. bit of okay. Igor Bodybuilding, Igor Fitness. Dude, then you're probably good. But it, it, who knew Tyler the Creator was taking all of our our fame here? Both of us. <laughs> yeah when that but when it, that album came out everyone was messaging me i'm like oh my god did you see this i'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> oh That's i love good, it man. Man. All right. So well, YouTube, uh, any, anywhere else, uh, you know, or do you think, you know, that's, you know, obviously Instagram just, as well. I, uh, yeah, Instagram uh, also. Uh, so I got a cool, like, so I'm kind of rebranding my website. Actually, one of the things which, you know, you guys mentioned earlier was like, I'm uh, I, in the beginning, I didn't even go by Igor. I went by Vitruvian Physique, which is kind of a cool name, but it's also a channel name that I thought up in 12 seconds before I even had 10 subscribers. So the problem with that is that you make a channel, it blows up and it's too late to change it even though like you didn't put any real thought 
you know, uh, thought into that. And so as much as I love for true, for true and physique, I am going to be rebranding just a little bit. I got a new website. So uh, it'll, it's actually going live in a week. So if anybody wants to check it out, it's going to be teamfitlife.com. Oh, that's a good website. I like nice that. And, yeah. Nice and simple. No weird Igor Opashansky fitness.com. <laughs> YouTube really puts you on the spot. Eh? I remember thinking of Colossus. I'm like, okay synonyms for massive and yeah. i want a behemoth that was taken so i'm like ah colossus works you know and uh, it, that it, was it, that it's hard because they're just like listen we need you to think of a channel name and don't worry if your channel blows up you can just stay with it for the rest of your life and you can't change it it's no pressure just if in case you have a million subscribers this is what everyone's going to be looking up so you you better think of it real good for real though oh my goodness yeah i'm definitely a uh, spam his media tell him to make a podcast because he's a natural at it so hopefully we'll all be able to enjoy that one day if that's something he gets around to making but as usual thank you so much everyone for listening tons of great content here uh we'll see you in the next one peace Bye out guys.